Each year in the United States, one person in 20 receives emergency care due to a fall. One out of three people over the age of 65 falls each year. Most of these falls occur at home, performing simple activities such as walking, getting in and out of bed, or tripping over objects on the floor. Falls are the leading cause of death from injury for people 65 years and older. The most common injury from a fall is a hip fracture, and approximately 200,000 hip fractures occur among the elderly each year. Hello, my name is Marian Karpinski. I'm a registered nurse and I'll be your host during this program. Physical injury is not the only result of a fall. The emotional effect can be devastating. The fear of falling again causes some people to restrict their activities, even if there was no physical injury. They stop activities they once enjoyed, such as regular exercise, going to church, or visiting with friends. With this change in lifestyle comes a feeling of loss and helplessness. Confidence and self-esteem are affected. Inactivity can cause depression, a decrease in muscle strength and coordination, stiff joints, and constipation. Avoiding activities because of fear and anxiety can actually increase the risk of falling again. Falls among the elderly are not uncommon. The normal changes that occur with aging place the elderly at a greater risk for falls. The cardiovascular system, muscles, nerves, eyes and ears all play an important role in keeping our balance, and these systems tend to decline as we age. Our balance is affected and our reaction time is slower. Falls, however, are not part of the normal aging process and many can be prevented. The elderly are not the only people prone to falls. People with chronic disabilities that result in pain or stiff joints, weakness, dizziness, or difficulty walking are at risk for falls. Some of these conditions are arthritis, cardiovascular disease, dementia, stroke, Parkinson's disease, osteoporosis, high or low blood pressure, lung disease, and seizures. Alcohol impairs balance, and alcohol abuse causes frequent falls. Medical conditions that contribute to falls should be treated by the doctor. Vision and hearing should also be checked regularly because our eyes and ears play an important role in keeping our balance. People we care for are not the only ones who fall. Caregivers who provide care in the home fall too. A Bureau of Labor Statistics study showed that nurses' aides were especially prone to falls in patients' homes. Take time to position your body correctly. Use proper body mechanics when helping someone to move. Never rush to do your tasks or rush the person you're caring for. The elderly are at a greater risk for falls when rushed, stressed, physically ill, or upset. Never carry objects that are too heavy or large. This could result in a loss of balance. Don't block your vision carrying bulky packages. Make more trips with smaller loads. Shoes play a big role in fall prevention. Shoes should have a non-skid low heel and a good tread. Avoid smooth leather shoes which are slippery or tennis shoes with a smooth bottom. Shoes with laces or Velcro should be firmly fastened. Check your shoes periodically to see if the soles have worn out. When walking on ice or snow, wear shoe chains or studded traction soles that help keep you from slipping. A shoe with a high top will help prevent a twisted ankle, especially when walking on uneven surfaces. In cases where ice cannot be removed completely, use sand, cat litter, or a commercial ice melt to provide traction and reduce the chance of slipping. Do not wear slippers outside. Take the time to change into shoes that provide good support and traction. Stocking feet are very slippery and should be avoided. One of the goals of fall prevention is to maintain independence. I talked with Carolyn Pyatt, a physical therapist, and Nancy James, an occupational therapist. They developed and manage a fall risk reduction program, and both have extensive experience in balance training. 
In our fall risk program, one of the first things we do is we interview the patient and talk with them about problem areas that they may have identified that we can give them solutions to help them reduce the risk of falling. And it's nighttime, getting up at night, maybe going to the bathroom. And when you do, tell me what happens at night. Well, I don't wear my glasses and I feel a little unsteady. Okay. Do you turn lights on in the evening when you get up? No. Okay. It's very important to realize that as you get older and you're not using your body so much for balance, you get very dependent on your vision. So nighttime, people getting up, they're a little disoriented, really need to have lights on in the room they're in and the room they're going to. And keeping your glasses nearby is a really good idea. The other strong thing that I feel about fall risk is our changing perception about the elderly. And we used to believe that loss of balance as you got older was an accepted part of growing old. And that's really something that we're trying to change people's understanding of aging. It does not have to be your natural course of aging. So keeping active is very, very important. I think that people think that balance is one thing. It's one like organ in their body that's going haywire that they just need to fix. And what I attempt to do is to teach them that balance is contributed to by many parts of their body working together in a coordinated way. Part of what we do for practice is to look at the things that people don't do well. And one of the things is that people don't really use their trunk muscles as well as they once did. When you're children, you tend to use these muscles walking on lines, crawling on fences. But as you age, there's not really the need to move that quickly. Once you can't feel the ground as well, as you once did, it's more important to have trunk muscles to be able to help you. And we try and emphasize that in patients that we work with. Forty percent of falls are a result of hazards in and around the home. By making some simple adjustments, falls due to hazards can be prevented. Sliding and tripping over rugs and runners is a leading cause of falls in the home. There are several ways to correct this. Removing runners or rugs is the best solution. Another option is to use a rubber matting under the rug or apply double stick tape adhesive to the back of the rug. The adhesive also prevents rugs from curling, which can cause someone to trip. You can buy rugs with rubberized backing that helps prevent slipping. When you purchase new rugs or carpet, Look for ones that have a short, dense pile. Avoid patterned rugs. The patterns can affect depth perception, especially in the elderly. Solid colored rugs are less confusing. Electric cords that run along pathways may cause someone to trip. Place electric cords along the wall. Do not place cords or wires under rugs or runners. Uneven surfaces can cause tripping or catching on the carpet. Keep walkways in the middle of rooms free from fans and heaters. Avoid clutter on floors. Magazines can be very slippery. Toys for children or pets can be hazardous. Telephones should be easily accessible. Rushing to answer the phone can increase the possibility of falls. Have several phones located throughout the house or consider a portable phone that can be moved from room to room. Rearranging furniture might make life more interesting for you, but when it comes to the older adult, it may contribute to falls. There is security in a familiar setting, and the older adult may become confused or anxious by a change in his or her environment. Move only furniture that poses a threat to their safety. Low objects that blend into the carpet, such as glass-topped coffee tables, baskets, and low stools, can often become a tripping hazard. Check furniture to be sure it is stable. Lean on it as a support, just as the person who uses it for support would. It may need to be reinforced or replaced if it does not pass the test. If it slides, use non-slip adhesive rubber on the legs to keep it stable. Chairs should have a back support and armrests. Armrests give support when getting in and out of a chair. Be sure to mop up spills immediately after they occur. Place a non-skid mat in front of the sink area to soak up water. 
Shelves that are too high can result in a fall because of bending, overreaching, standing on tiptoes, or having to use a chair or ladder. Place items that are used regularly in a convenient place. A good rule of thumb is to place those items between the hip and eye level. A reacher can eliminate unnecessary bending or reaching. Reachers are available at home medical supply stores. The bed should be a comfortable height and firm enough to get in and out of easily. The bed needs to be stable and not slide when getting in or out. Moving the bed against the wall can help to stabilize it. Beds with wheels should have wheel brakes that lock the bed in place. A telephone and lamp should be at the bedside table to eliminate the need to get out of bed to answer the phone or turn on the light. A flashlight nearby works for emergency situations. Eyeglasses, canes, and walkers should be left near the bed. Keep electric blanket and heating pad cords out of the way so they don't become a tripping hazard. Avoid dresses, pants, and robes that are too long and loose. They can cause someone to trip. For people who are unstable on their feet, have them sit rather than stand when dressing. High or low blood pressure can cause dizziness, especially when getting up from a bed or chair. People who experience dizziness upon rising should be encouraged to sit at the edge of the bed or chair for a few minutes before moving into a standing position. Bathrooms are a common area for falls. The bathroom can be slippery because of the potential for water on the floor. Textured strips and appliques work well in tubs and showers. Rubber slip resistant mats work both in and outside of the shower or tub and help prevent slipping. To reduce slipping when getting in and out of the tub, avoid adding oil to the bathtub water. People will often use bathroom fixtures and towel bars for support. Be sure that sinks, toilets, and towel bars are securely fastened. The best bathroom supports are slip-resistant grab bars. They should be placed inside and outside the shower and tub area and next to the toilet. Your home medical supply store, home care nurse or therapist can advise you on proper placement and installation. Use a shower chair or bench for someone who is unsteady on his or her feet. This will allow the person to sit while showering. A handheld shower head will make it easier to shower when sitting. The chair or bench should have a back support and rubber tipped feet to keep it from sliding. Someone who is weak or has balance problems may have difficulty getting on or off the toilet. A raised toilet seat will make it easier and safer. Some come with armrests. If you're using a standard toilet seat, make sure it is securely attached to the toilet. Proper lighting is more of a necessity as we age. The older adult needs three times more light to see than someone younger. Cataracts and glaucoma are two common conditions that limit vision. Vision is affected by changes in depth perception, less tolerance to glare, and difficulty adjusting to the dark. Light switches should be accessible at room entrances and at the beginning of any dark area. Night lights can be a safe and economical way to mark a dark hallway or pathway to a room. Avoid using low wattage light bulbs. This makes seeing at night even more difficult. Always use the maximum wattage suggested by the manufacturer of the light fixture. If you decide to install light switches or additional lighting, be sure to have a qualified person do the installation. Auto touch lights turn on the light when you touch the base and are helpful for people with arthritis or painful joints. There are adapters that will turn your existing lamp into a touch sensitive lamp. The light goes on when you touch any metal part of the lamp or the cord. People with cataracts can be sensitive to glare and bright lights and you may need to adjust the lighting to make it comfortable and safe for them. Avoid lighting that casts shadows. Glare can be reduced by using soft light bulbs, lampshades, 
or globes to diffuse light. Glare from windows can be reduced by installing window blinds that are translucent. Stairs are the most common place for falls that result in serious injury. Stairs need to be lit so that each step is clearly seen when going up or down, especially the first and last step, which is where most falls occur. Light switches should be at both the top and bottom landings of the stairs. Stairs that are carpeted should be checked regularly to be sure the carpet is securely fastened. Check for wrinkles or loose areas and worn or torn spots that could cause someone to trip. Do not place loose rugs or runners on the top or bottom of stair landings. Loose and unstable steps should be repaired immediately. All stairways, including outside stairs, should have handrails installed at the correct height and on both sides of the stairs. Round handrails are the best for grasping and should be shaped at the top and bottom of the stairs. This gives people with vision problems a signal that they have reached the top or bottom landing. Oil drips from cars or other liquids can cause garage floors to be very slippery. Make sure that all spills are cleaned immediately. For oil, use a commercial grade oil absorbent. Most falls that occur outside are on curbs or steps. Step edges should be marked with reflective tape that is designed for outdoor use. There is also traction tape that can be applied to the stair treads. This will minimize the chance of falls when stairs are wet. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions when applying any stair tape. Uneven door thresholds can cause a fall. Use a contrasting colored adhesive strip along the edge to make them more visible. Be sure pathways and stairs are clean. Leaves, moss, snow and ice can cause serious falls. Over time, paths and sidewalks can become cracked and raised due to tree roots, freezing and soil settling. Even a small rise in a path can be a hazard. Raised areas should be leveled and filled in and the tree roots removed. If the walkway is made of stone or brick, watch for raised or missing pieces. Low voltage exterior lights help to illuminate pathways. Spotlights can be used to light larger areas that are used after dark. Hoses left lying around are a hazard. When they are in use, keep them away from foot traffic. When you are finished with them, coil them up and place them off to the side. The side effects from medications can contribute to falls. Side effects would include drowsiness, dizziness, and weakness. Be sure and read the warning labels on all medications that you're taking, both prescription and non-prescription, as well as uh, herbal remedies. Medications that could promote falls could include water medications, high blood pressure medications, sedatives, pain relievers, and medications taken for psychological reasons. Some people have a condition known as sundowner syndrome. They are fine during the daylight hours, but become confused when the sun goes down and it becomes dark. People with sundowner syndrome are at a greater risk for falls during this time. Most falls that occur because of a cane are a result of improper fit or because the cane is in need of repair. Be sure to have the cane measured for the proper height and the end should have a rubber tip. If the person you're caring for is dependent on a cane for support, remember that even with a rubber tip, the cane can slide on wet surfaces. Falls that occur with walkers are usually a result of improper fit or because they're in need of repair. Be sure that the walker is measured for the proper height. This walker is a pickup walker. It is picked up with each step. It's important that this walker have rubber tips on each leg to keep it from sliding. Check the rubber tips occasionally to be sure that they're in good condition. Another type of walker is the front wheeled walker. This walker rolls with each step. If both legs have rubber tips, 
the walker tends to hop or grab, and this could cause a fall. To correct this, you can place a cap at the end of the rubber tip, and this will help the walker to move smoothly. When walking with a walker, hands must be free to grasp the handles on both sides. Packages or small items should never be carried by hand, but placed in a basket or saddlebag attached to the walker. Avoid carrying heavy objects, which could cause an imbalance. Have wheelchairs checked periodically to be sure they are in good working order and that the chair has been properly fitted to the person using it. Some home medical supply stores offer a free yearly checkup. Always raise the foot support and lock the wheel lock before transferring. Alarm systems are available for people who are confused or forgetful and at a high risk for falling. A small transmitter is worn around the thigh area or clipped to a collar. When they attempt to get up to walk, crawl, or kneel, the alarm goes off to alert you. Emergency response systems provide emergency help at the press of a button 24 hours a day. The response button is worn around the neck, on the belt, or wrist. These emergency systems help to alleviate the fear of being alone during an emergency, such as a fall. This type of emergency response system is not appropriate for someone with Alzheimer's or dementia. They may be confused and forget how to use the system. To locate a 24-hour emergency system, contact social services at the hospital or check with senior programs. When reporting a fall, you want to record the date, the time, the location, the condition of the patient when found, and a history of prior falls. This information will help the doctor to determine whether the fall was related to medications, activity, vision, or hazards in the home. happens when you've done everything possible and the person you're caring for is still falling and is no longer safe at home. I talked with Deborah Coleman, a social worker who helps families with this situation. When you've done everything you can, you need to understand that you've done a lot and the person who's fallen may no longer be safe at home. You can call your doctor and you can ask him for a home health referral. Have a social worker go out and talk to the family members. Now what I find when I'm out talking to families is that when each person feels like they've been heard and for the first time the person who is falling hears how they're affecting the family members, they are less resistant and willing to move. If there's not a social worker involved, you can call your elder locator, which is a 1-800 number, and they can help you find the services you need. There is also your state senior service program listed in the yellow pages that can help you find a caregiver or a place for the person who's fallen to live. Sometimes the hardest part for family members and friends is to remember that inactivity can result in emotional and physical problems which actually increases the risk for falls. We need to be careful not to contribute to the fear of falling by placing too many restrictions on activities. As caregivers, we can balance the precautions shown in this program with encouragement of regular exercise that increases strength and coordination and enjoyable activities that promote independence.